Hello and welcome to Friday Afternoon's Table Talk. It's lovely to be here. I'm Alison Simon, I'm the team vicar in Melksham and it's good to gather together on the airwaves. Today I want us to think about patterns. Now that's a bit of a random thing to say. Random patterns maybe. I was thinking yesterday about the Ascension Day service that we had and moving towards that period of Pentecost, that period of waiting in between. And as I was lying in bed last night, I was thinking about our patterns of prayer, our patterns of thought and our patterns of behaviour. Sometimes for all of us, we have patterns of thought that lead us into a, a damaging sort of place when we question ourselves over and over again, or we doubt ourselves or we chastise ourselves. And you can almost get into a loop, you get a voice that just goes, oh, I don't think it's just me. Patterns of behaviour, of course, have been changing since the coronavirus hit our world, not just in this country, but across the world. And the patterns of behaviour of how we go about doing things, even nipping out into a shop is now a, a 40 minute queue and a more of an ordeal. How we model our behaviour, how we think about what we're doing is all changed by how we encounter other people, whether we are distancing ourselves, whether we are thinking. So those patterns of behaviour have been changing. I was thinking about this in terms of how we make use of our time in isolation to develop our patterns of behaviour and maybe our patterns of prayer. When you're having a moment where your mind is going round in a loop and you cannot move on from it, try and change the pattern. Patterns is something that has been focusing my mind lately. I've been, whilst in lockdown, trying to find ways to still my mind on occasions. So I've taken up colouring. I'm not at all artistic, so I'm relying on somebody else drawing a picture. All I have to do is think about colour and shape and what I want to go where. There's plenty of random things in this book that's going to keep me organised and happy for quite some time, stilling my mind in that way. Of course, the other way I still my mind is in prayer, and I'm not alone in feeling the need to do that. The desert fathers and desert mothers, and if you haven't come across that term, do look it up, go on Google, see about the desert fathers and the desert mothers in the fifth century, would go off into the desert and actually seek that isolation that would give them time and space to encounter God fully, to fully immerse themselves in silence, in prayer, in God's presence. Now we don't have to go off into a desert. Our desert can be just around us in our homes at this moment. But what the desert fathers and mothers taught us was that desire to spend time with God can be so enriching. When your mind is taking you into a place where it's unhelpful, then stop and take it somewhere else. I think when we go in prayer to God, we change the colours and patterns of our mind. Our ability to sit and talk to God, because that's what prayer is, a conversation with God, is that way of us shifting our patterns of thought into a different form. We talk to God, we're able to express those things that are on our hearts that worry us. We're also able to express and give thanks for the things that bring us such joy and there is still such joy around us. And when we look and recognise and give thanks for that to God, it changes our thought pattern. And the colours of our mind go from a grey, dull, flat place into a bright, coloured, enlivened space. During this period, between 
Ascension Day and Pentecost, I think is a really good time for us to particularly focus on prayer. Thy Kingdom Come is the Church of England's initiative asking people to be praying during these 10 days. To have a focus of that prayer, perhaps for five people that you might know that you would like to pray to God for. It might be that they might come to know God more. It might be for their situation which is really difficult and you want to hold them to God. But to focus on five people and to make that prayer purposeful. So for thy kingdom come, usually Hannah, our children's worker and myself, are in the schools doing all sorts of creative things with, with marbles, with clay, with hearts written on, with prayer trees. This year, you can do all those creative things in your own space at home. And if you're not particularly creative, if the thought of picking up a pencil or doing something creative fills you with horror, then don't worry. The creation is in your words to God and the creative is in God's words to you. So, use this time. Think about thy kingdom come. You can go online and look at the resources if you would like, give you lots of ideas for prayer. If you're not interested in that aspect of it, then just spend some time, maybe allocate some gaps in your day that are just for prayer, just to change the patterns of your mind, the patterns of your behaviour and bring them into somewhere in relationship with God that is enlivening and enriching. So as we go through these next few days, carve out that time, think about your thoughts, change them, talk to God more, and be blessed. We're particularly blessed at the moment by beautiful weather in our country. And I think I was looking and listening to the blackbird in my garden yesterday, singing such a beautiful song. And I thought, there truly are amazing blessings in every moment and in the smallest of places. So take heart, stay safe, stay well, and do join us again on Sunday for worship. Bring something to eat, whether it's cake or toast or bread, something to drink, tea or juice or wine, and we will have a meal of remembrance. So come and join us. Don't forget, Pentecost isn't this Sunday, but next. But we will celebrate that when it arrives. Bye for now.